everyone, it's me, Jay. And this past weekend, I went to South Carolina to visit my dad for the first time since transitioning. Um, I've been in contact with him for a while now, as you guys know from my coming out to my dad as transgender video. Um, and he's been just such an oddly supportive person. I never thought I'd get the most support from my own father. And it was such an interesting encounter when I went to go visit him. Basically, a situation happened and I knew that he needed to see me right away. So I made a last minute trip with my girlfriend to get in my car and just drive to South Carolina for the weekend. We would only stay for a day, but we'd be there and I'd be able to see him. And that's all I cared about. So it was a six hour drive and you know, we, um, Got, we went through the six hour drive listening to music, some podcasts, vlogging a little bit with each other. And, and it was just one of those nice, scary drives because it's like, wow, I'm actually seeing my dad for the first time in so long. I was getting anxious the closer and closer we got. But once we got there, I kind of breathed for a second and realized that I'm not ashamed of who I am. I'm so proud of the woman that I've become I'm so proud that I'm able to stand strong today, and I'm, and, I, and I'm not ashamed of who I am, and I don't care how he views me. As long as I'm with my own father, that's all I care about. So I got out of my car. He wasn't in the, the front yard when I got there, and are we normally, because I grew up in the house, we normally enter from the back door, so I walked with my girlfriend, like walking towards the back door, and he ends up coming out with him and my sisters, and he didn't even look at me. The moment that I saw him, he didn't even look at me. He just embraced me and gave me like a minute long hug. And it was so emotional to be able to have that support without like, it just, it was such a statement that like, I don't care about anything other than right now you're with me and I have you and you're my child. So it was, it was really interesting to, I don't know, have that and like really not be judged for the first time in a really long time especially with family and you guys know my mom has been really unsupportive of me so to really get that from my dad was something that i never thought that i'd ever get so throughout the time that i was there um obviously talking to him i'm a little bit shy at first because i'm afraid to really emphasize my voice because a lot of you guys know that voice changing voice training changed it a lot it was an original called flying and i've tried to do this youtube thing before where i post music that i write or i see or I, I cover but i don't know it never really turns out too well and it's been a crazy hell of an experience um, going through the voice training so I'm always scared to kind of talk a lot because my voice is so different but once I opened up it was really nice being able to talk to him and like being able to just say things that I wanted to say to him for a really long time and he's in this place of vulnerability right now and so am I and we just had plenty of great conversations throughout that day um, he understood that I was vegetarian, which a lot of like, I feel like older school Hispanics wouldn't. Like my mom keeps calling me stupid because I say I'm a vegetarian. But he was, he was just like, so you can eat chicken though, right? Chicken's not meat. And it was just, it was funny, but he respected me for who I was. And like, he made me dinner that was vegetarian and really was able to just show me love. And the entire time I was there, he would call me she, her pronouns. He would call me Jay, and he would refer to me as, as his daughter. And it was something that I didn't even ask him to. I didn't even tell him to, he just did it. And don't get me wrong, he messed up plenty of times, but I could tell that he was trying. He would mess up and then just fix himself. And it's just trial and error for him. But to see that conversation from over a year ago, to like where we are now, it was so mind blowing to know that like, I had the funnest time in my life being able to go back to the town I grew up in, show my girlfriend the whole city, um, talk to my dad, um, being able to have this experience I haven't had in a long time. Don't get me wrong, I was terrified because it's the deep south and I guess you really never know. Um, and I've been so comfortable a lot lately going to women's restrooms. I've kind of been like in this I don't give a fuck attitude. But for some reason when I'm in the deep south, I'm just like, these crazy white women are going to kill me. <laughs> but yeah, I was able to visit 
where my tattoo is. My tattoo is the center of my hometown. And it was, it was so amazing to just be able to speak with my dad about literally not like we didn't even talk about my transition the entire time I was there he didn't care about it he just cared that I was there talked to me about school talked to me about work talked to me about our lives and our problems and what we're going through talked to me about my sisters talked to me about the improvements he's made to the house talked about money talked about being like just an adult and it was just such an adult conversation I'd have with my own dad that I've never had in my entire life. My dad and I weren't close at all. I made videos talking about my past and basically the relationship I had with him. And we weren't close at all. But the fact that he's growing and he's understanding that our, you know, hard past can like doesn't have to determine, you know, where we stand today. It was really beautiful to see him try and reach out to me and try and you know, be the father that he couldn't be when I was younger. And I'm the kind of person that I let things go because they happened such a long time ago. My dad wasn't the best dad growing up. I mean, I could have been a better kid, I guess. Um, I know all the times, all the conversations we had was about money. And money basically engulfed my life because I was so poor growing up. And I hate it, I hate it so much. I hate talking about money. And so like any time that I see him, I don't even, I, don't, I haven't asked my dad for money in like years and I haven't asked my mom for money in years because that's not important. I can live on minimal things. I can cut down on eating out. I can I can cut down on life. I don't my life doesn't have to revolve around money. I can get through it on my own. But what mattered was that moment and being there with him and just being a real adult, just talking about kind of like his life. He really wants me to write a book about how he you know being an immigrant coming into the United States, working his ass off, you know, gaining his way to citizenship and just like living his life. And if I really want to one day, it'd be such an interesting story. Um, maybe I'll do that in the future. Maybe I'll take him um, through that because he wants to revisit everywhere he's worked and basically just see everything that he's ever done and basically be able to just know that he's he feels happy now. He's in a place where he's the most happiest and I'm really excited and I can't wait to maybe hopefully do that with him one day. But with that being said, my encounter with my dad was just like no other. It was, it was so cathartic and so unexpected. Like a person that comes from a background that's so strict on culture, that's so like raised on masculinity, the Hispanic and Mexican culture especially, it for some reason emphasizes masculinity so much and it embodies them and who they're forced to become when they grow up. To be working from such a young age, to be able to man up and support the household and to really, really bust their ass to really help out the family. And it's crazy that him being like that, my dad only had two sons. Obviously, I was never a son, but um, be him being able to understand, knowing that like, I'm going through a lot of pain. He kept saying that, like, I know the pain you're going through. Like, I, can, I understand the pain you're going through. Like, it's okay, you don't have to suffer anymore. And like, it was just so sweet hearing this man with this like terrible Spanish accent. Um, like, he like knows a lot of English, obviously, but like he has such a thick accent, like raised such a certain way to understand the pain that their child is going through and not caring about it, just knowing that they want to be there for their child, that I'm their child. And he kept saying that like, you're, you're, my, you're my child, like I'm gonna love you no matter what. And it's crazy that more parents can't be like that. And I never thought, like I said, that I, that would ever come from my own father. So being able to be there and being able to hear him, being able to just spend time with him for a few days was, really amazing and a big props to my girlfriend Emily for um, putting herself in that situation with me. It was such a fun time with her. I know it took a lot out of us. We got home and we passed out. We were so tired but it was it was a long fast weekend that we had to deal with the majority of driving but it was great. I got to spend time with my sisters who also are amazing and support me and it's crazy because like you're raised with especially in the Deep South, hearing a lot of things about people that are gay, hearing a lot of things about people, you know, being trans and all this negative stuff. The whole state voted for Trump, basically, and being able to come home and knowing that I feel more safe there than I do, like, 
at my mom's house in like Southwest Florida, where like it's it's more progressive and diverse. It's just interesting to see. But yeah, I'm just really happy that I got to be able to bond with my dad in a way that I I've always wanted to, and I'm so happy with it. And I'm not trying to say that you know give family time they'll come around because for a lot of people of color that's not the case. That isn't the case for so many. You know, a lot of times coming out isn't a thing for. POCs, like you are just stuck closeted your entire life. And I, for a long time, I felt so disconnected with my culture because of, I came out because I had such a bad reaction with with my family. But I don't know, I feel so close or closer than ever lately with it because of the interaction, because I know that I can live, I can my identities can intertwine and I can live life every day um, with all of these just I don't know, beauty of people accepting me, beauty of family accepting me, and I can be who I always knew that I was. I'm a Latina girl. Um, uh, that was redundant, but you know, like I'm happy. I'm um, POC, I'm cutie pock. Um, I'm just, I'm really fucking happy right now. No one can really take that from me. No one can strip that. The relationship that I built with my father, it took a long time, but like, he's just such a, an amazing, amazing man. And I really look up to him, and I really am so thankful that he was able to to stand strong and be there for me when I needed him the most. And yeah, I'm so thankful for that. And I can't wait to see him again soon. I'm having I have plans um, in a few months, I think maybe next month to go see him again. So maybe I'll vlog more of that. But I I know I didn't vlog much this time because I just I wanted to kind of spend that time with him. I didn't want to like think about YouTube, think about anything like that. It was just. I don't know, just being there and us growing and us really seeing each other for the first time in a while. But I love him to death and I'm so happy I was able to make this video. If you guys want to support me, I have an EP and I also have um, a Patreon. Those links will be down in the description. If you want to follow me, I have a Twitter and Instagram where I keep a lot of people up to date with what's going on in my life. But yeah, thank you guys for everything. I'll see you guys in the next one. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Till then, bye.